In this tutorial, we will look at painting through geometry, which was the technique used in creating the blood in this shot. The footage is from Gala Walker, with kind permission from Jack Bauer and Blake Jew 730 Limited. So here we have a camera track with a geometry model which only approximates the actor's face, as there is no scan available. The point being here is that it is not accurate. So I have a script set up with the geometry and I have a camera reprojecting the UVs onto this via a UV project node. And then through an apply material node we UV wrap our paint strokes onto the geometry. So naively I might try and paint while viewing the result. However, because the image I need for the geometry as supplied by 3D is not the same size as the final plate, I'll find I have painted outside of the image area. So if I view the paint node and paint, I will see I'm painting across the face, but it is difficult to locate the area I want to paint in. Although it is possible to get the UV map of the face through the match geometry, in this case I am simply going to use a coloured grid which I will add via the UV projection seen earlier, and this grid will give a much better idea where to paint. As we animate through you can see it's locked to the face. And if we zoom in on this section here, you can see we need to paint within an area H1 to J1 in the cyan. So if we go back to our paint node and just half mix the grid and paint in that section, we should now see our blood appearing in approximately the right place. So we're going to paint between H1 to J1 in the cyan and if we switch to the face we can see that it's approximately correct. However, this setup is still not ideal so I'll switch to a two viewer setup and now I can see more interactively what I'm doing. So now I have my first paint strokes in place I can now remove the grid and go back to the roto paint and work on this area. Now, as we move through the shot, because we have painted onto the geometry and through the camera, we have the blood moving with the head. However, there is slippage occurring due to the inaccuracy of the model. So to fix this, we want to animate the position of all these paint strokes. So to do this, we'll create a layer, select the paint strokes and move them into this layer. Now in the Transform tab, we can animate their position in one go. So I'll set a keyframe, move further down and adjust the position. So with a small amount of correction, we are able to get the blood to lock to the eye. And if we go through and keep checking where it goes off and readjusting it, we'll end up with a more accurate result. And here you can see how the paint strokes are actually moving in the 2D plate. Now to make the blood disappear into the eye, we are going to create a second rotor paint which will merge with an inside on the first, and basically do a scratch back. So as I paint a stroke, I'm revealing the blood, I'll set the lifetime to all, and then we'll view it, and we'll see it's just a white brush stroke. To animate this, I can adjust the right on end or right on start parameters like this. And in this case, I want to animate the right on end. So I'll set a key here and go down a few frames 
and you can see the blood strokes are being wiped off. With everything else you've done, you can now see it shrinking into the eye. This has been Howard Jones for The Foundry. Goodbye.